Before we dive into the digital world's hidden dangers, let's be clear. This journey is about understanding, not exploiting. In a world where technology is woven into every part of our lives, it's easy to forget how much power we hold in our hands. But with that power comes responsibility. This is not a how-to guide for hacking or bypassing security. We're not here to teach you how to break the rules or cross ethical lines. The information here is for education and awareness only. Our aim is to empower you with knowledge so you can recognize threats, protect yourself, and help others do the same. Think of it like learning how a lock works, not to break in, but to protect yourself and your loved ones. Just as you wouldn't leave your front door unlocked, you shouldn't leave your digital life unguarded. Using these techniques for malicious purposes is illegal and can have lifelong consequences. Laws are strict and digital footprints are hard to erase. One wrong move can change your life forever. Our goal is to help you understand the risks in our connected world so you can be safer, smarter, and more confident online. Whether you're protecting your family, your business, or just your own privacy, awareness is your first line of defense. Today, we'll pull back the curtain on a specific digital threat, demystify how it works, and arm you with the knowledge you need for self-defense. We'll break down complex concepts into simple terms, so you can spot red flags before they become real problems. The digital world is full of hidden dangers, but knowledge is power. The more you know, the better prepared you are to protect yourself and those around you. We're here to protect, not harm. Our mission is to build a safer digital community, one informed user at a time. Your phone isn't an impenetrable fortress, it's a powerful tool with vulnerabilities that can be exploited if you're not careful. Even the latest devices have weaknesses that hackers can target. Understanding these weaknesses helps you use technology wisely and securely. By learning how attacks happen, you can take steps to prevent them and keep your information safe. For more on digital safety, check out Cybernexia. They're a great resource for staying ahead of threats. Their guides and tips are designed for everyone, from beginners to experts. They offer in-depth info to help you build a stronger defense so you can stay one step ahead of cyber criminals and protect what matters most. Now, with that important warning out of the way, let's get started on our journey to digital self-defense. Stay alert, stay informed, and let's dive in together. You may not know SS7, but you use it every day. SS7, or signaling system number seven, is the invisible operator behind global phone networks. It connects phone companies worldwide, making calls, texts, and data possible. Think of it as the postal service for your phone, handling all the logistics you never see. SS7 was built in the 1970s, when only trusted telecom giants had access. Security was based on trust, not on defending against outsiders. The system was designed for reliability, not modern threats. Today, despite our advanced phones, SS7 still runs in the background. It's like driving a new car on ancient roads, modern tech on outdated infrastructure. This mismatch creates vulnerabilities that hackers can exploit. That's why SS7 still matters. SS7's biggest flaw is trust. It assumes every network user is legitimate, so requests aren't questioned. If someone asks for your phone's location, the system just gives it, no verification. This trust by default is a hacker's dream. With access, anyone can send commands and impersonate a real operator. SS7 lacks proper authentication. No one checks if you're who you claim to be. As telecom has grown, more companies and even foreign agencies have gained access. Each new connection is a potential weak link. Hackers only need to compromise one poorly secured provider to target phones worldwide. Once inside, they can reach any device on any network. The system's openness is its Achilles heel. That's the root of SS7's vulnerability. So how do hackers get into SS7? The process isn't as mysterious as you might think. In fact, it often starts with a simple search for vulnerabilities in the vast, interconnected world of telecom networks. Hackers look for weak points, often targeting smaller telecom companies with outdated infrastructure and poor security practices. These companies may not have the resources to keep their systems fully updated, making them easy targets. To get in, hackers might use phishing attacks, tricking employees into revealing passwords, or exploit unpatched software vulnerabilities that have been ignored for months or even years. Sometimes, a single careless click is all it takes to open the door. 
Some hackers skip the hard work and simply buy access on the dark web. There, criminals sell login credentials or backdoor access to telecom networks that have already been compromised, making it even easier for new attackers to get in. Once inside, hackers can send SS7 commands just like a real network operator. They blend in using the same tools and interfaces as legitimate staff, making their actions hard to detect. Their messages look completely legitimate to the network, so there's no immediate reason for suspicion. The system treats them as trusted insiders, allowing them to move freely and quietly. This access is the gateway to all SS7 attacks. With the right commands, hackers can unlock a world of possibilities, from intercepting calls to tracking locations. Now, hackers can target any phone anywhere in the world without ever being near the victim. Physical distance is no longer a barrier. Your phone can be reached from across the globe. The attack bypasses your phone's security entirely. It doesn't matter how strong your password is or if you use fingerprint or face unlock, SS7 attacks operate outside your device's defenses. As long as your phone is on and connected to the network, it's potentially vulnerable. You don't have to download anything or click any links. Just being online is enough. The real danger is at the network level, not on your device. Attacks happen behind the scenes, invisible to most users and even to many security tools. That's how hackers get their hands on the levers of global communication, quietly, efficiently, and often without anyone noticing until it's too late. With SS7 access, a hacker's first move is often to locate their target. Your phone constantly connects to nearby cell towers, and the network tracks this to root calls and data. Hackers exploit this by sending a fake request for your location. The network, trusting the request, replies with the cell tower you're using. This reveals your approximate location, sometimes down to a city block. Stalkers or spies can track your movements in real time, all without your knowledge. You get no alerts, your phone shows nothing unusual. This silent tracking is one of the simplest SS7 attacks. It's a profound invasion of privacy and often just the beginning. Once a hacker knows your location, they can intercept your calls and texts. By sending a command, they trick the network into forwarding your communications to them. This is called a man-in-the-middle attack. The hacker's system receives your calls and texts first, then passes them to you. You notice nothing, maybe a tiny delay. Meanwhile, the hacker records your conversations and messages. They can gather sensitive info, business secrets, or personal details. This attack happens at the network level, not on your phone. Even the best phone security can't stop it. Your privacy is completely compromised. Intercepting text isn't just about eavesdropping. It can let hackers take over your accounts. Many services use your phone number for two-factor authentication, 2FA. With SS7 access, hackers intercept the verification code sent to your phone. They request a password reset, receive the code, and lock you out of your account. Suddenly, they control your email, social media, or even your bank. All it takes is one intercepted text. This attack bypasses the security we trust most. Your phone number, meant to protect you, becomes your biggest vulnerability. The takeover can happen in minutes, often without you realizing. That's the devastating power of SS7 exploitation. These attacks aren't just theory, they've happened. In 2017, criminals in Germany used SS7 to drain bank accounts. First, they fished victims' banking credentials. Then they used SS7 access to intercept the bank's SMS codes for money transfers. The criminals logged in, initiated transfers, and intercepted the authorization codes. Victims slept through the theft, no alerts, no warning. By morning, their accounts were empty. This case proved SS7 attacks are real and devastating. It showed that SMS-based two-factor authentication is vulnerable. Security systems can be chained together and turned against you. The lesson even trusted systems can be exploited. The vulnerabilities in the SS7 protocol can seem overwhelming. And it's true, they're a real threat. But the good news is, there are practical steps you can take to protect yourself and your personal information from being compromised. One of the most important things you can do is avoid using SMS for two-factor authentication. Instead, switch to app-based authenticators like Google Authenticator or Authy, which are much more secure. These apps generate unique codes directly on your device without sending anything over the network. 
That means hackers can't intercept your codes, even if they have access to the phone network. Take a few minutes to update your most important accounts, like email, banking, and social media, to use app-based two-factor authentication. This simple change can make a huge difference in your security. Also, treat your phone number like a password. Don't give it out unless absolutely necessary, and avoid posting it publicly or sharing it with untrusted sources. Always be on the lookout for phishing attempts, those fake emails or texts that try to trick you into giving up your information. Use strong, unique passwords for every account and consider using a password manager to keep track of them. For private conversations, use end-to-end -end encrypted messaging apps like Signal or WhatsApp. These apps scramble your messages so only you and the person you're talking to can read them. Even if someone manages to intercept your data, strong encryption ensures your messages and information stay private and secure. Think of your security like layers. Use authenticators, protect your passwords, encrypt your messages, and always lock your devices when not in use. Each layer makes it harder for attackers to get through. While you can't personally fix the flaws in SS7, you can make yourself a much harder target for hackers and cyber criminals by following these steps. Stay informed about the latest security threats, stay cautious with your information, and take control of your digital security. Remember, your vigilance is your best defense.